Hi everybody, my name is Janelle Cooper and today I'm gonna to teach you how to do the super fun stitch called the wiggly stitch. So as you can probably see, I have become obsessed with this and I actually did it last year um, when I first started this channel and I just felt like maybe it was a little bit advanced for my brand new beginners, but we made this. And I wasn't, I wasn't sure that I liked, it didn't really look like a star to me, but I was assured that it looked like a star to others. So I'm not gonna do this one on camera, but if you guys do want to um, jump to this, which was the first one I did, um, I'm going to put the link in the description so that you can get to it for the actual pattern for this. But I am instead going to demonstrate the easier version of it, which is my, in my opinion, the easiest version is the circle. You can do them in a square too, if you want to. Squares are kind of cool because you can actually make your square be whatever you want. I mean, it's really a blank canvas because you start off with a grid in the back and then you build off of it. Um, you can make your square be anything and then you can actually even make a blanket out of it. These make great, these ones I made out of cotton. So they make great like trivets, um, pot holders, washcloths, that sort of thing, um, coasters, um, all that, or in this case, I made this out of um, all kinds of fun acrylic yarn, which was my sparkly yarn. I used some faux fur yarn in there, just a lot of fun. And then I put pins on the back of it, and then I use it on my basket bag, right? So if you want the link to how to make this bag, that is in the um, top right corner, but also it'll be in the description too. But see, look at all these little guys I made. I originally had this like this, but doesn't that look like a crazy face. So I took that one off and just had like my two little fireworks on there, but um, so much fun. You can really have a blast with it. So these ones I did with a smaller hook. I did these ones um, with a G size hook and just a basket full of fun different yarns. And then this, this one I also did with a G size hook. I don't know why. I think I just liked the texture of it better. I liked it being a little bit tighter. These ones were done with H hooks and just regular cotton yarn. You can do really whatever makes you happy. I'm gonna make a small flower, I think, to put on my basket bag. So that is the plan for today. I'm gonna do the circle version today. If you guys decide that you want me to teach you the square version, I'm gonna put some links in the description so that you can see how to make the grid and how to um, build off of it. But it's basically the same concept as the circle. I just think the circle is easier. I didn't struggle at all with this and I did struggle a little bit with this one for some reason, which you think I wouldn't with squares. If you find that you want me to teach the square version after you've learned the round version, just uh, leave a comment and I will look into it because obviously I'm having a blast. So um, the thought of making an entire blanket this thick, I mean, look how thick that is, but I've seen people do it. I've seen pictures of it. So, um, you know, we can make some little squares or something out of those. I'm gonna do a smaller circle. Um, this one's big because I wanted the entire rainbow on there, but I think what I'm gonna do is just a little flower. I'm gonna start with yellow in the middle, maybe do white for the flower part, and then just like green on the outside, or maybe I'll do yellow, yellow, white. We'll see. I might do the back, backing in yellow so that this part is yellow. That's what I'm gonna do. This'll be white, this'll be these last two colors will probably be green or blue. So we'll figure that out, but um, it, they're just so much fun. And that's what the back looks like. Isn't that neat? Okay, I've already changed my mind. These are the colors that I'm gonna use for my little flower wiggly stitch circle. And we're going to start off with yellow in the center. I kind of want my circle to be a little bit smaller. So if I can tighten the stitch up a little bit, I take it back, we're gonna do the G hook on this. Hopefully you guys will be able to see it okay. For those of you who haven't done a magic circle before, Hopefully you've seen my other videos. I use them all the time, but you just pull up a loop as if you're going to do a slip knot, but you don't finish the slip knot. You just go ahead and chain one to hold it together like that. So you have the circle and right here where you have the two strands going over the top, you're actually going to put in six single crochets just over the top of those two strands. three, four, five. So five single crochets plus the chain one. So we're gonna pull it together. 
make sure that you're gonna have six stitches. So it's one, two, three, four, five, and then the connection, the join makes it six. So slip stitch to join, just like that. And then you can go ahead and pull that nice and tight. So it's a nice circle, perfect little circle there. And then you're going to chain up two. Sorry, that's your first double crochet. Then you're gonna chain one and then double crochet back into that same space. Okay, so you're gonna do two double crochets in every space around with a chain in between. So chain one, double crochet, chain one, and then double crochet back into the same space. You can actually do this with half double crochets too if you wanna make your circle smaller. When we get done, we should have 12 double crochets with a chain in between each one. See how I'm doing that? So I've got two double crochets in that stitch, two in that stitch, two in that stitch, and two in that stitch with a chain in between all the double crochets. It's gonna make this little mesh that we're gonna build off of. Okay, so far I have two, four, six, eight, ten. I need two more in that stitch right there. I'm gonna chain. Okay, and then chain so that you have one in between. And then you don't need to go into the top stitch of this, just grab that whole thing, just go into the hole. And that makes for a nice little wheel right there. So there should be 12 stitches total. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. Okay, so now we're going to chain two. This is the space right here. So just like with regular, like circle law is what I call it, circle crochet rules. Um, the first row you double what you started with. The second row you triple what you started with. So you're going to chain two to, for your double crochet, chain one for the stitch in between. And then in the first one, you're going to do your double crochet in the same stitch. So you're increasing, right? Then chain one and just do one double crochet in the stitch. and then chain one, and then do two in this stitch. Chain one, one, um, or yes, second one in the stitch, still working on that. Chain one, single. Do that all the way around, you should have 18 stitches. Okay, final space. We're just gonna do one, chain one to do the space in between and then do one double crochet in that space, and then chain one, and then go ahead and join right there. Okay, technically, if you wanted to, you could stop right there and just do two rows of color. I actually want to do three, maybe even four. So three rows of color is gonna take it out to here. Yeah, that's probably the perfect size right about there. You could take it out to four. You could go out as far as you want. You can make it huge if you want to. Make a rug out of it. Like what a cute rug, right? You could actually um, get that non-slip um, rubber stuff and you could actually attach it on the bottom even as you go. Like cut it out and attach it on the bottom as you go and then it won't slip. And this could be a cute little rug if you made a big one. Um, which might be the reason why we might wanna do a square one in the future. So if that's something that interests you, definitely let me know and maybe we'll look into doing that. That might be kind of cool. I'm gonna do orange, sky, sky. So actually I only need one more row. So I'm just gonna do one more row to do what I want to accomplish here. So on the next one, so basically what we've done here is you increased plus one, increased plus one, right? Now we're gonna, 
this next one we're gonna increase plus two, increase plus two. So we're gonna increase, you're always gonna increase on the same one. So as it goes out, you're gonna see that the increases always happen in here. And then the stitches in between where you've added, you're just gonna do one, single one in there. So chain one, and then you're gonna do double crochet, a single one of double crochet. Chain one, double crochet right there. So this row is increase plus one, this one's increase plus two. Hopefully that makes sense. And then you just repeat that all the way around. So chain one, increase, chain one, still working on the increase. But see how the increases are stacked up on top of each other? That's how you know where to increase. Chain one, regular double crochet, chain one, regular, and then chain one, increase. Okay, just continue doing that all the way around. And that should put us at 24 stitches or 24 double crochets around. Okay, so here we are on the last one. You're just gonna do, we've already done our chain in between, so now we're just gonna do our last double crochet. Chain one, and then just attach into this hole right here. Like that, and then you can knot it with a slip stitch, cut it, you can weave in your ends if you want to, or you can weave them in as you go later, like you can actually, because we're gonna do an outside row right here, and you can actually just go over the top of it. Um, it's a little harder to weave in your ends when everything's just like a mesh like this, so do whichever you like. I'm gonna go ahead and weave in my center end here just so that my hole is nice and tight and it doesn't come undone. I'm actually a member of many, many crochet groups on Facebook and one of the common complaints that I see about um, magic circles is that they tend to come undone. I've never actually had that happen so um, that tells me that I must be doing something that you all need to learn or to do. So I'm just gonna show you really quickly. I don't put the knot right in the middle because um, I don't necessarily want it to be super visible. So I'll just like go underneath there. So that's still perfect. Come over here and grab a kind of a hidden yarn in behind. And then I'll just make a quick little knot. And he's kind of hidden off to the side there. So the center still looks pretty perfect, right? And then I just find a place to weave in my ends, but when I do, I do it back and forth. So right here, this is a good spot because these are just um, single crochets, the bottoms of the double crochets, right? Just grab like, I don't know, like maybe five, and then go through that way, and then go skip over this so that you're not just pulling it right back through so it kind of stops it and then go back the way you came. And then for a little extra support, if you want, you can actually go the other direction. I, sometimes I don't even do that. But sometimes I'll just go this way. And then go back the way I came. That back and forth, I think, is what keeps it from working itself out and the knot kind of secures it. But it's kind of important to do the knot like not right on top of your circle, otherwise it kind of takes away from the beauty of that perfect circle. Okay, next step. I'm gonna take my next color, which, so this part is gonna show through, right? Um, like that. You can see the middle part of the part right there. So I'm gonna take advantage of that and make that yellow like the center of a flower. So I'm gonna leave that there. Then I'm gonna grab my flower color. I decided to go with orange because I've been doing a lot of daisies lately and I feel like I need to go back to my original favorite color. So what you wanna do here is you just wanna grab a center piece. So wherever that you have an increase to, just go right in between that increase to and you're only gonna do the bar. So come back up the top here and then pull your yarn in. 
like this. So when you're crocheting this, and you can actually pull this little guy to the back so he's not bothering you, or you can work him in as you go, whichever you find that you like. Um, when you're doing this, we're actually going to be crocheting on these. So we're gonna go across, back, down, like a little wiggle across the top of these, and then connect them together. So that sounds weird, but this is what we're gonna do. So we're gonna go up. Sorry, you're probably gonna have to tighten that a couple times because he's not really secured yet. So we're gonna go up two, chain two, and then you're gonna do your double crochet in on this right here, this little bar. So you're going to do wrap like a double crochet and go under this bar and then come up the other side, pull up your piece and then do two and then go through two and then do it again. You can do up to three on here, depending on how tight you want this to be. I kind of like it to be nice and full. So you could just do two, you could do three. I'm gonna do two just so it's easier for you to see. But so you started in the bottom and you went up two. Now we're up to the top of this little edging thing right here, right? Just pick one side or the other. You're just gonna do one on that top part. That's what kind of secures it and makes it wiggle or makes your wiggle a little bit more profound, I guess. So then you're gonna jump back over to this bar and come back down. So it is a double crochet right here. Two of them on that bar. And then come down to the center between those two stitches and you're gonna do one right here. That's what holds it in place so that it wiggles back and forth. Otherwise it kind of it can kind of turn into sort of a, not really a straight line, but not like not as profoundly wiggly. Okay, and then do that again. And you're gonna go, I'll do it one more time so you can watch. Double this bar, the next bar over. Do two of them. And then go up to this top part right here and you're just gonna pick one side or the other. I like to stick with the same side all the time. So on the last one, I chose the left side um, just so that it's, you know, the same. Continuity. And then back down this side. Okay, and then secure it again right down there at the bottom in between those two stitches. And then you just continue doing that all the way around and it makes this cute little wiggly flower in the middle that's very three-dimensional. See how it's standing up like that? The, what's cool too is if you feel like you're getting lost and you're not picking the right ones, just look at the back and that'll tell you that you're, you're staying in the circle. So you, these are the ones that you wanna be working on right here. The next row will do these ones. The next row will do these ones. So just keep doing that till we get to the end all the way over here and I'll meet you right there. Okay, so we're right to the end of the first row. See that cute little flower on there? So all we have left to do is this last V right here. So I just wanted to show you um, how I do it. So we're just gonna go ahead and do like we were doing before, just do your regular double crochet through that bar. Okay, and then the top. And then back down. Okay, and then all you're gonna do, you've already done this bottom one here, right? So all you're gonna do is you're just gonna attach it with a slip stitch, just like we did before. You don't have to go into the actual stitch, just go into the space and then slip stitch that together. And then you can knot it. You can 
I like to have, I have seen it done where it just continues on if you wanna just have it all be one color or whatever, but I like my rows to be defined, like so that they're separate from each other, you don't have that continuous part. Um, so you can do whichever you prefer. And it also kind of depends on the design you're doing too. Because you can, once you have that blank canvas, whether it be a circle blank canvas or a square blank canvas, you can do kind of anything you want on it. You can, you know, you could actually swirl up all the way up into here. You know, you don't even have to do it row by row. So um, that's kind of what makes it fun. And um, I would love to see everybody else's once we get this done. But so let's, I'm gonna go ahead and weave this part in and then we'll start on the next color. Okay, on this one, you're, you can start anywhere on it. I kind of like to start it kind of depends on how you want these things to ruffle. Um, I mean, you could just start right here. I think I'm just gonna I'm just gonna make it easy and start at the base of one of these V's right here, on the next row up. This time I'm gonna show you how you can just um, weave this in as you go, this end, because I never did weave in that first part of the end on the other one, so I'll just show you. It's really easy. But you basically just do your single crochet right over the top of this bar and your little tail there. Same thing as before, just like jump over. And then come back down. I'm actually gonna take this and weave it back so that it doesn't work itself out. So those were two stitches right there. So when you come down here where this one is, you can put it, like I said before, you can actually put it right next to it. You can put it through the middle. Just do it, I would do it right next to it, I think. Um, but then you can actually, as long as you are consistent and you do it the same way, it doesn't matter. So I put it right next to where the other orange part was. I think I originally planned on putting it here and I could have started right there and gone up. It doesn't really matter. As long as you don't have any open bars that you're skipping over, you're fine. And then you just continue on all the way around. See how easy it is? Like it's so easy and fun and addicting. It's just, if you can just like learn the concept of crocheting downward. And then actually, once you do this top part, you can actually kind of make it more fun and do an even, you can even do like a single crochet on top of this ridge right here and do like a two tone, which I think I did. Oh, I actually did some for a friend and that's what I did. Oh, I did it on here. So on this one, you can see that like the bottom part of the stitch is in that white and then I did a red fluffy thing on top of it to just kind of give it even more three dimension. So um, you can do that with this too. So just keep continuing all the way around till you get back over here and I'll meet you there. Okay, so here is the last part, the last little bar right there. We're going to, because this is done in even numbers, they always connect perfectly. So come down here, this one's already been done down in the base there, so just grab that bar and that, in the space right there, go ahead and just do your slip stitch through that and then end that off. Weave in your ends and then we'll go ahead and do the last round, well the last round of this and then what I'm gonna show you how to do, which the last round is exactly what we just did, it's just in you know the next round up but then I'm gonna show you how to do the edging. So um, I've done a couple different edgings on here. One, this one, I wanted this to look more like a firework, so it's, it's got a pointy edge. But this one, I kinda want it to look more like a cloud. Like this one has like a little 
rounded edge on it. So I think I'm gonna make a little, so like this is the flower, this is the sky, we're gonna make the sky a little bit lighter. And then on the outside, I think we're gonna do little white clouds. Um, I don't know if anybody else will understand what I'm trying to do, but at least I'll know, right? That it looks like a flower with a sky background, little clouds in the background. So um, that is what I'm gonna do. So I'm gonna go ahead and weave in these ends. I'm gonna do this row right here, cause you probably don't need to watch me do another one. And then I'm gonna show you how to do the scallops on the outside and then we'll be done. And then you're like, how many, 20, 27,000 of these can I make? Cause literally this is done with um, cotton. So you can actually use this as a scrubby. Um, you could even do like a back part of this and like put a little soap um, pocket in there. So leave part of it open and do a little soap pocket. You could use um, that scrubby yarn that I always wanna buy that I never actually do buy cause I'm not sure I'll use it. So now there's a good use for it. You could use scrubby yarn and actually make this into like a pot scrubber if you wanted to. Um, or for me, I'm gonna use it as an applique for my ever changing basket bag. So I will finish the next color and then I will meet you on this outside trim and we'll work on that. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start, see this little guy right here where it's just tacked down? Um, that's where our fan is gonna go, right there. So the ones on either side where there's nothing tacked down, this is where we're going to anchor down with a single crochet. So it'll be like single crochet, fan, single crochet, all the way around. So I'm gonna go ahead and just start right here. And I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna pull up a slip stitch and just to kind of make it a little bit more secure right there, I'm gonna slip stitch and then I'm just gonna do a single crochet right there, just so it just is nice and secure. Okay, then what we're gonna do is we're gonna do, I'm gonna let the tail go. I was gonna weave in the tails as we go, but I, I don't wanna confuse everybody. So we'll just let those tails go, we'll weave them in at the end. So I'm gonna do two double crochets on the right side of the stitch and then two on the left side. Okay, so our little fan goes over the top of that, that little um, single crochet, or it's actually not a single crochet, it's the bottom of the double crochet, but it's just a little anchor right there. It's gonna do two on one side, two on the other side, and then we're gonna come down here and we're gonna slip, or we're gonna do a single crochet right in this open space. And that creates this little fan. And we're gonna continue to do that all the way around. So here's another one of our little anchors. We're gonna do two on this side, two on this side, and then a single crochet. So double, Double, skip over this guy. If you don't have an anchor there and you wanna just put your, you actually can set this up so that your um, single crochet anchors go down right on top of these if you want to. And you can just do them right through the middle. I mean, really you can set it up any way you want. I just wanted to make it look a little bit more centered right there. Okay, and then just continue doing that all the way around. And since you are working with um, even numbers, it should work out perfectly. Okay, anchor it right there. Okay, so that's what it looks like. If you want, you can make this taller by putting a maybe a triple crochet in the middle right there and then putting it right through the middle of that stitch. Um, you could make it a little bit more defined. Instead of doing a single crochet right here, you could just do a slip stitch right there and that'll pull the scallops down a little bit more. I just wanted mine to be sort of subtle and cute right there. So do whatever makes you happy and um, I will meet you right back here at the end. Okay, so we've made it all the way around and all we need to do is come back in this first cro single crochet right there and you're just gonna go inside there, pull up a loop and slip stitch right there to join. And you can knot it too. So what do you think? Pretty cute, huh? Um, <laughs> I did it in cotton and I didn't need to do it in cotton to put on my bag. Like if you do it in cotton, that's usually if you're gonna use it for, um, 
maybe a, a cup or something, like if you're gonna use it as a coaster or a scrubby, cause it, um, cotton absorbs water really well and um, where acrylic doesn't. But obviously, I am completely and totally addicted to this stitch. So much fun. If this is something that you want to do more of, please leave a comment on the video or you can join us on Facebook at Janelle's Quarantine Crochet and I would love to see pictures of whatever you come up with because um, it really is like, it's so addicting. <laughs> it's just crazy. But it would be kind of fun to make a rug, like make a large rug and then um, use the uh, non-skid uh, rubbery stuff on the back of it um, and then it would it would be just the perfect little rug to put like it by your sink or whatever so um, like a bathroom rug or something they're so fluffy and thick anyway so let me know what you think of that hope you enjoyed it thank you so much for joining me today I will see you soon bye